Okay, welcome to another module recap. This time, module 10, we are progressing pretty well. In module 10 was actually quite different from what I covered so far. In module 10, I looked at how can I make experimental setups cheaper and faster, this process of doing experiments. Um, and I showed you that, let's say that I have a, obviously I will be focusing on fluid side of things. If I have a fluid flow, that depends on multiple parameters. I showed you that I can combine them into non-dimensional, that is important, underline that, non-dimensional group of terms, and I make my analysis much cheaper and faster. In order to do that, obviously I need to know the units or the general dimensions of the parameters that I'm dealing with, and I demonstrated to you how to find several of them, and I did FLP and MLP, so those are alternative to each other. And I said that an equation, if I have an equation, they need to be dimensionally homogeneous. So if the left hand side unit is something, the right hand side it also needs to be something. Then I showed you the Buckingham Pi theorem. That's a very important theorem. Here's what it says if I have a fluid flow that depends on k, that's the number of parameters that I have in my system, and if these depend on r, basic dimensions, as I mentioned, it's MLT or FLT, you know, keep one B and B consistent, I will obtain K minus R independent these non-dimensional terms that I just mentioned. And the name of these non-dimensional terms are pi terms, okay? And then I uh, gave you a fairly nice set of steps. The first step was to identifying these parameters. So basically it's similar to the module five, six or seven where read the question that relates to that in an undergraduate class. So we give you those parameters, okay? So read the problem and just pick that up. The second step is I have to express each of these parameters at the MLT or ML FLT system. And again, you need to be consistent. It doesn't matter if the final result for your experimental setup will be the same, okay? And the next step is now this is a little bit more trickier. You need to select R out of these K parameters. And I gave you two and a half uh, rule. The first rule was that these, these, when I select these R parameters, they must be dimensionally independent of each other. I cannot select length and diameter as an example. Okay. And the second rule is that as a combination of these three parameters, I must represent all M, L, and T if my system is depending on those or FLT. Okay. So those are important. Um, and the half a rule is that please do not use the left-hand side parameter in my repeating variable. It's not incorrect. It's going to make your life a little bit harder than the road. I'm going to explain in a minute or two. And then basically, the next step is after selecting these repeating variables, add one more parameter and combine them and obtain yourself some pi, parameter, pi terms. And then the last step is you need to repeat this process of obtaining pi terms, k minus r minus one times. After that, I sold an example on how, how to, illustrating how to obtain my pi terms, the parameters were given, and I was able to process this, you know, very systematically following the steps, and I obtained myself some pi terms. And then I introduced some common non-dimensional numbers. So this is a good um, shortcut. Let's say the Reynolds number, the Weber number, right, there in the video. Um, if I see, for instance, rho, v, d, and nu as the parameters, nu is viscosity, what I can go ahead and say is, hey, this looks like the Reynolds number, so I don't have to do the process. I can simply go ahead and say that the non-dimensional number will be the Reynolds number. Then I looked at the similitude and modern. So what this is, is let's say that I am designing a naval ship, and I want to test this in the wind tunnel, right, or a water tank. Um, I will not be able to test this, the whole large ship, right? So I need to make the scaled-down version of it and test it. But then, at the end of the day, I don't really want to know what happens to the forces, or as an example, in the small scale down model. I really care about what happens in the large. And what is the relation between, as an example, the force of this scale down model to the large full scale ship? Is that linearly proportional to the scale that I have? That's what I analyze. But I also showed you that the first thing is we need to establish geometric similarities, kinematic similarities, and dynamic similarities between the model and the prototype in order for this to be a good scaled-down model. 
if you follow the steps that we have established, the first pi term relationship gives me the prediction equation, pi 2 through pi n minus 1 terms will give me the similarity requirements. And then I showed you several exercises doing this modeling, scaling down, scaling up, and different things. So you may want to watch those lectures as well.